Thank you for inviting me to this webinar entitled How Big Data and Analytics Support Protective Ventilation Strategies. I have conflict of interest to declare with General Electric, of course, for this symposium and other companies. As you know, 300 million patients are operated on each year worldwide. These procedures offer many advantages to patients, but there is also a downside, post-operative complications. Post-operative complications increase treatment costs and reduce both life expectancy and quality of life. Incidence of complications varies from 1 to 5% and can increase up to 20%. This is an international problem. When regarding this map of the world from uh, Rupert Pierce, all countries need attention. Most frequent surgery inducing mortality were major abdominal surgeries, including upper and lower gastrointestinal surgeries. Poor patients' outcomes are common after inpatient surgery. Global initiatives to increase access to surgical treatments should also address the need for safe perioperative care. For safety, a question has recently been debated concerning procedure ventilation. Do intraoperative ventilator settings change mortality or morbidity after surgery? Several studies have clearly demonstrated the negative impact of non-protective ventilations, including high volume, zero zip, high peak, and plateau pressure. In the study performed by Futi et al., in which we have included patients for improved study, two strategies were reported to analyze the impact of intraoperative effect of protective ventilation. Clearly, non-protective ventilation induced higher mortality. Several other studies have confirmed future data on similar models and currently the measurement of the driving pressure seems promising. To summarize, the concept of protective ventilation is based on simple measures used in pre, intra and post-operative care. We won't go into details because you are familiar with them. We participated in the improved study multicenter study for about three years. And the question remains, do you use protective ventilation in your operating room? This is the question. If I ask you, you will answer, yes. It's just a matter of course. You are convinced that you are applying the right ventilation parameters in your operating room. But how can you know that you are applying a POP strategy for all your patients in your party rooms? It's impossible without an automatic record. We had the proposition to test the general care station inside SAS solution to collect all the data from nine of our GE uh, anesthesia care stations and get access to specific dashboards dedicated to lung protective practices in order to measure how we were following the recommendations. The principle is to achieve an automatic data collection as soon as a new patient case is opened. No human intervention is required and this procedure's dashboard to help make data-driven decisions. In practice, the anesthesia care station um, in practice, the anesthesia care station is connected to the network via an AG45 circuit and all the raw data are transmitted to a cloud-specific domain where they are structured and analyzed to produce tabular data on graphic presentation. The next step is to know what can, we, what can be done with this computer system in other world, what are the objectives? The objectives we set were to evaluate the practice of pop ventilation, recruitment maneuvers in our establishment and to improve its performance by using the care station insight applications. To do that, we conducted a prospective study including nine operating rooms 
the results of which were presented last year and are currently being published. The main objective were to improve ventilatory parameters in accordance with the recommendations. Tidal volume, PEP, recruitment maneuvers, driving pressure, PEP plateau. Four steps were performed and I will introduce them to you. For step one, after a period of three months during which we didn't modify any way of working, just doing some tests to verify the accuracy of the dashboard and gain confidence in the tools and results collected, we got the first picture of our real practices to meet our objective of long protective strategy. We included more than 2,000 patients. This is the first picture of our real practices produced by the dashboard. We can view the percentage of recruitment maneuvers, type of ventilation depicted in the circle with blue color for volume mode, for example. The data for the step one are shown on this slide. As you can see, only 13% of patients had recruitment maneuver and median PIP was less than five centimeters. For step two, information to the clinicians, information to the nurses, and training were performed over one month and continue, and data simultaneously were recorded. After the step two, we stopped to give information and return to real life for three months, and we collected 1,000 patients. Over this period, we observed that all settings were worse. We have also decided to automatically transmit information during anesthesia to the anesthesiology to make him think about good practices and pop ventilation. For step four, pop-up message appeared just after intubation on the screen of the anesthesia clinical information system, and you can read it. Have you thought about alveolar recruitment? Here are the trends for the four steps. All the settings were better at step four. The conclusion of this study is that we were able to analyze our practices in real time. We were able to analyze quickly practices that diverge from the recommendations and at the same time develop tools to support the practice of change. We did not show uh, a decrease in mortality, but this study included patients of all ages and all uh, ASA uh, categories. So in conclusion, improving patient safety during ventilation requires the implementation of recommendation and the analysis of adherence to this practice. To date, the analysis, the analysis of ventilation practices cannot be done in a manual or declarative way. The care station inside solution as demonstrated in our study and in our institution, its usefulness to monitor ventilation practice without interfering with daily activities. These tools allow regular audits that will be a valuable aid in the application of recommendations and ultimately to patient safety. Thank you for your attention.